if you're selling fire extinguishers, open with fire. So I ask people all the time that I train, I say, what fire do you open with? Are you opening with, well, let me give you a big outline of what we're gonna talk about today when the person's thinking, just, just do it, just get right in. Or are you gonna open with something that knocks their socks off? I got a stock pick for you, and it goes by Zoom. Okay, we're a little late to the party, but maybe bye, bye, bye. Probably not now. Maybe short it. Who knows? But Zoom is going through the roof. Why? Because it's the only way to communicate right now. Okay? Whether it be for meetings, whether it be for sales, whether it be talking to friends. I mean, for crying out loud, they're having happy hour parties, get-togethers on Zoom. Okay? Okay? So if you haven't figured it out, you need to learn how to get on video, be prepared for video, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about today, selling over Zoom. And today's show sponsor, none other than Achieve Health Alliance. Go ahead and check us out at AchieveAlliance.com. We will be having the Achieve Health Consortium in two weeks. Uh, Margo could probably put the link below, if not, I will, to sign up for that. That being said... You know, a gentleman we had on the show today's guest is a gentleman by the name of Jess Toddfeld, who is uh, an ex-TV producer, speaker coach, trained some of the biggest names in the world, best-selling author, my speaking coach, Craig's speaking coach, and he does a lot of sales through Zoom video. He coaches how to look at speaking events on videos, and you know, he reached out to me. He said, hey, John, why don't we do a session? And I said, perfect. That's what we're looking for because nobody knows how to do it. And uh, this is the world we're transitioning to. So let me welcome to the show, Jess Toddfell. Welcome, my friend. Thank you very much. Everybody at home, please hold your applause. <laughs> bear with us. Bear with us here. Jess is, uh, we actually are doing it through the cell phone here, right? We ran into a couple challenges, but we're going to make it happen. Um, you know, Jess, we talked about it. Probably, and that's another uh, option. Yeah, exactly. That's another, That's another. Sometimes it's a great option. It's funny. We've we've had challenges with the guests through the, this live stream technology multiple times. And, and we've literally, I mean, last week we did it with Craig through the cell phone. So when all else fails, try the cell phone. Now, we, we've been talking about Zoom probably for the past two weeks. It's a program that I use. And what you're seeing is, is, is that everybody's learning this program, video conferencing, getting used to it. And I think this is the time to change. The time is now to make changes to your business to go through video, go through digital technology. The market is forced to accept it right now. Now is the time to build that out um, and start talking to your clients through Zoom video, whether it be renewal meetings, enrollment meetings, uh, just check-in meetings, sales meetings, because uh, this is the way of the future. Jess, you you probably know as well as anybody else. I mean, for crying out loud, SaaS companies that are billion-dollar companies are 100% sold through video conferencing. So right. why, do, why do you think it is that we're so far behind in the face-to-face -face sales world that, uh, you know, us as insurance salesmen, because you know my industry, this is where we are? I think we all agree that face-to-face -face sales is nice. It's nice to see a human being and go up and breathe your germs all over them outside of the last month or so. But now we are forced to adapt and we got to do it however works. So yes, for folks who are tuning in who are, don't spend that much time on camera like you and me, uh, we got to catch up or people have to catch up. and. Today, my goal was to, or is, to demonstrate ways that you can look, sound, feel more comfortable with the technology. If anybody has questions about microphones and lighting and all the different options, and then, of course, the sales pieces that you and I were talking about, which is, you know, we still have to connect like human beings, and we still need to close sales, even at this moment in time where beyond the technology, you know, people are distracted. 
I mean, look at Jesse. I could have done the, the whole conference. If I do, should I do the rest of our interview like this? Is this bad? Is that this works. Away anything? Because by the way, by the way, no joke. That's coming next, and I'm, I've already been ready for it. Um, I'm not even joking around. We're all going to be walking around like this is Asia, and the I saw these masks that people made for people who are deaf and read lips, and they cut a hole in it, and they they put in piece of plastic so it's some sort of plastic sheeting and then taped it in and if we have to do that obviously not on video conference this is if you are starting to be in front of people at some point soon we might be wearing those masks but you heard it here first and cut a window in it put a piece of plastic that's where we are in the world right now john yeah i agree i mean adapt or die and i mean look at this situation Two guys that understand video have all the programs. We ran into an issue. We're still able to pull it off with the phone. I could tell you Zoom's a lot easier, guys. We are using a live streaming platform. Live streaming pulls so much data, so many things to go wrong. The Zoom platform works great. You don't need headphones. Um, most of you could do it from your laptop. Jess will talk about reasons to do it different ways. I mean, Jess is doing it on a, on a selfie stick right now with his phone. So... Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it, but we'll try to keep it simple for you guys. Why don't we, why don't we talk a little bit about, um, you know, what, what should I be preparing for? I, I'm going to be, there you go. I'm going to be on camera, right? And <clears throat> how do I make, you know, we know face-to-face -face is the best way to sell, right? I mean, it just is. But how could we make our atmosphere that we're in, like yours, that, you, you know, obviously you've got some background stuff. How do I make it more uh, more comfortable for them, more enticing, more of a, a better environment to bring them into? Well, a lot of people ask me, should I just be up against a blank wall? And the problem is you're losing out another opportunity to create rapport with people, for them to see into your world a little bit. Now, some people right now are hearing me and thinking like, uh-oh, I don't want them to see everything. And that's okay. So you can create a space that you know shows off something of your world. So actually, uh, three years ago, I set up this home studio for this reason. I don't do any training from here. And by the way, just a short background, I met many of you at the big conference uh, back in, was it October? I think it was October. August. Uh, no, it was September. Uh, it was August, August, high stakes right. advising, I forgot. Yes, so I got to meet many people, many of you guys face to face. Uh, but the short background on me is I've been a TV producer. Uh, I have a Guinness record over my shoulder for being interviewed the most times, but I train people in two ways, which is to either be on camera or be in the media or to give presentations. And John said, as a presentation coach and sales presentation trainer. And this whole situation that we're in, my two worlds merged all of a sudden. For the first time in 15 years, both worlds merged. So we need to not only be great at selling, but we also have to be all of a sudden overnight, everybody has to be great on camera. So we were just talking about backgrounds. So I have this, now you don't have to have uh, exactly like this, but I would say do not just be up against the blank wall. You're losing an opportunity to connect with people. I actually don't use this background very much, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna come over here. I'm knocking stuff over, but this is kind of like the uh, cable news kind of look. You know, I've got, it looks like it's New York City behind me. That's where I'm, uh, well, actually my home's just outside New York City. Um, it's okay. You know, I bought it and I basically got bored of it immediately. Um, one thing, and I don't really have the lighting set up for this, but I think people will be entertained. Um, if I shoot toward my desk, and actually this is a standing desk, so I can make it a little bit higher. I can make sure to prominently uh, put some family pictures around and people get to see a little something about my life and ask some questions. Um, we want that. It's Like I said, it's a way of building rapport. I tend to shoot over here where I have the different fake New York City backdrop. And my wife once said to me, why do you tell everybody? Because if we're being authentic, people say, holy cow, what have you? And I'm like, the truth is, <laughs> yeah, it's, it looks good on camera. And they know, okay, I'm not trying to uh, dupe anybody. I have this uh, camera with a teleprompter, all this stuff. So that's just the background. 
you don't have to have that perfect, perfect background, but you do have to. John, you are making sure that the guests on your show have decent lighting. So you could either use, I mean, this is off Amazon, this is a big softbox light, but nowadays they actually sell, we'll go over here by the teleprompter, uh, these little lights. I don't have it turned on because it would be on the wrong side of me, but they have these little lights for 25 bucks or so, $30. And some of them come with a softer feature. And then this way you can at least be seen. And you know what? Um, experiment. You just, you, we are forced right now to be on camera. And I know it may be weird either looking into nothingness, which I'm now looking into the camera, or if I'm looking at myself, now I look weird because I'm looking too far to the side. We don't want to do that. But we need to practice and we need to, we're going to, you're going to get over it. If you're not into, you're like, ah, it's not my thing. Well, it is now if you like to close sales, then you get used to it. What do you think, John? Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> you, you got to get your ass in front of the camera. It's like you said, whether you practice. I mean, now's a good time. Everybody's utilizing Zoom. You could FaceTime. I've been FaceTiming with people through the cell phone. Again, guys that are listening uh, on the Facebook Live, Jess, we had some technical difficulties, and Jeff is shooting this on his cell phone with his AirPods in to get the better audio. I can tell you one thing that you got to get right. And if you're able to get a, a microphone and I'm happy if anybody wants to email ideas on cheap cameras and microphones, I utilize the Logitech. I think it's a 920. This is not what I use here, but when I do my video conferencing to make it simple, there you go. Jess got it. Throw that right on top of the laptop. That gives you HD quality versus non HD. I think it's a little bit more clear and professional. I like to use an external mic versus um, using the computer mic for better sound. Another tip is is always have Ethernet. It's completely my fault that I forgot to tell Jess to, to utilize uh, an Ethernet cord with the live stream, so we had to have a specific thing. It's my fault. I didn't tell them in advance. But I would always recommend you utilizing the Ethernet cord because you're broadcasting uh, the Zoom platform, and if you've got internet problems, it's going to be a challenge. I had it happen the other day because I just completely forgot to switch over to the Ethernet. But you're going to want to make sure that Ethernet, because everything that can go wrong, a lot of times will go wrong. One thing, Jess, you know, uh, I have, not only do I have backups, I probably have three or four of everything, because every time I go to look for it, I can't find it. But that's it. That's another thing with uh, live streaming here. We'll keep it simple. Um so we talked about the background. Lighting, I think, is is super important. This actually isn't good with the hat because of the shadow. You wouldn't be wearing hats probably on sales meetings. But having that box lighting that Jess showed is, is phenomenal because you want front-facing lighting. The biggest mistake I see everybody do is they stand in, fr Jess, they stand in front of a window thinking, oh, I'm going to bring light in. No, you don't want light coming from behind you want light coming from ahead so if you're facing a you have a window right. lighting you want the window shooting on your face you need them to be able to see you light coming from the back is bad if you're going to put a ring light you got glasses it's not going to look good you're going to want to have it up on an angle i like the box light just as shown here with the diffuser okay because it yes. takes the glare uh the, the the direct light glare away from it okay go ahead jess now, let's say I have, you mentioned uh, sometimes people want to buy the ring light. This is a tiny one for the phone. So, you know, I, like you, as time went on, you know, try out different pieces of equipment. It's, uh, it's kind of fun. It's an excuse to uh, mess around with it. But you can also, I'll step over here. So this is without light. And you can see I'm a little bit darker. Um, but if I put this little ring light and I attach it, it just it's like a little clip and I just attach it to the camera I'll have nice lighting the whole time and it's rechargeable so the main thing is if you're gonna be on sales calls test this out in advance so people can definitely hear you that's actually the bigger of the two if they can't hear you it's a big problem if the video ends up being a little choppy or internet great point off, people are usually pretty people pretty, will um, not forgive okay bad audio they will forgive bad video but they will not forgive bad audio that's why i always recommend getting like the audio technica it's an 80 dollar mic utilize that if you have to 
Let me say hello to some of the guys here in the crowd joining us. Forgot to go to the comments section. If you're watching on the podcast, make sure you check out the Facebook Live every Thursday so you can join in the conversation. Eric Hendrickson. We got Aaron, Craig, Ben Connor, Bill Hughes, Derek Fernandez, Ray Kober. Ray Kober says, the majority of my meetings are now conducted over Zoom and have been since January. Great. Because the reality is, is now's the time to train your clients. As Craig would say, that you train your clients, your clients train you. Ben Connor says, sales meeting last week via Zoom with video on. Patrick Moore. Great. And I think you should put video on. I don't think you hide behind the screen with these Zoom meetings with a PowerPoint. You, could, you have the option to put the camera on, be a real person. People want to see a real person. Train the clients to do some. Bill Hughes. Okay, Bill Hughes. I'm surprised, Bill. That, uh, great to hear that. I've done some, some non-business meetings the last two weeks with video on on Zoom. They've gone okay. Congratulations. <laughs> I would have never guessed you jumped early, Bill. I'm proud of you. Wendy, what's up, Wendy? Wendy says, check out your lighting and settings with a friend. Absolutely. Practice, practice, practice. Get it going because uh, I'm a stickler for it. It drives me absolutely nuts. Craig hates me, but I'm so such a stickler with the audio quality, the video quality, the lighting quality. Obviously, we run live stream, so it's a lot more technical, and I don't even want to tell you how much money we spent. But, Jess, I have that ring light as well. I've never used it along with many other electronics I bought and probably haven't used yet, but just in case, right? And we have all that stuff just in case. And what I wanted to show people live, now you said to everybody, oh, Jess is using the phone today. I want to let you know whether you're using a phone or usually I, I block that light with my head. So I'm just adjusting myself here. Um, but I have a selfie stick that has a little tripod that comes out the bottom. So right now I just have it standing. Actually, it's on a chair, so I got it right. But I wanted everybody to see there are a lot of options you know, if you have uh, an iPad and that tends to work really well, great. But you brought up something really important, which is nobody is saying, you know what I hope? You know what I hope they do today? I hope they put a PowerPoint full screen and then they read to us. Oh, this is going to be so good. Uh, it's going to be just like Netflix, said nobody <laughs> ever. So yeah, let's let's go to yeah, that, Jess. Let's that. go into we, we've got the lighting, and, and I love this because it pertains. It's so funny. It pertains exactly to speaking, right, guys? If you just tune yes. in, Jess is my speaking coach. Craig's uh, tra trained CEOs, executives of big companies, been a TV producer. This is his. This is his go-to. He's probably blowing up right now with opportunities, which is great, right? So let's talk about that in that presentation. We get into this meeting. And now, essentially, think of it like a live talk. We have to give a sales presentation, and now I have to do it through Zoom. And, and most people go to, I'm just going to go through a PowerPoint. It's easier. I don't, I'm going to hide behind the PowerPoint. And it's brutal. I want you to think about what works when you're in person. How do you create rapport? I mean, use this as best you can to be a human being. I am looking at the camera but I'm thinking about the people that I got to meet when you did your live event. I'm envisioning some of them out right now. I know as you named some names, I know some of these folks. So my thought is how can I help? How can I, uh, you know, reach through? So that's when we get to really let the real us come out. So, you know, that's just one piece of it. And actually I, I'm going to say this to be able to get there faster the more we're not thinking in this direction, which is we're worrying like, you know, oh, do I, uh, does this look okay? Or uh, what do I, you know, what am I coming across as? And we focus on how am I helping them? How am I really paying attention to what they're saying, creating that rapport to open, um, asking questions, um, helping, keeping a good eye on time, watching their eyes to see, are they, are they you know, tuning out, looking at their, at their phone or their email on the side and just kind of like, huh? Uh, oh, that's actually one nice thing about video conferencing and Zoom is you can see people. You ever talk to someone on the phone and you've been talking for a little while and then you can tell that they've, that they're they like checking their mail and they're doing something else. They're, they're not paying attention. Now you, they, we can see it. So we have a visual indication if they're on board. We got here, Tyson Parker says, I've been doing Zoom all week. Meetings have gone well. Plus, it saves travel time. For crying out loud, I've been telling you guys this. 
Those smaller those smaller accounts, who the hell wants to go see them anymore? Take 80, 60, 80 bucks. Probably not right now because you can't get the Logitech cameras online. They're like 250 bucks. But they're normally 70, 80 bucks. Get them a cheaper one. I don't give a shit. Because because uh, you don't need to say, see them in the best quality. You used a good one. Send it to them. Get them used to utilizing these technologies and train your client. Hey, we had a meeting last year through the Zoom. Why don't we do that again? It worked out great. You could freaking bang out six renewal meetings in a day for the month on smaller groups, right? I mean, how much profitable is that? When I used to own a landscaping company uh, 17, 18 years ago, it was all about having a tighter route, so you only had to take your lawnmower off once and then you can go door to door. Save time. More time in the truck, it, you lose money. So it's the same time with meetings. You are losing money. All right? You like that, Jess, a little landscaping story? John, I love, I love that. I always I love it when you bring in any of the stories that show other parts. And by the way, this is an example for everybody else. That show other parts of your life, either parts of your life like you once had, whether it be landscaping or poker or you name it. And I know the day I met a lot of uh, you guys that people were thinking, oh, how do I integrate some of that? But the other is the point you just brought up, which is you're training them to be able to have these video meetings. So this is a piece of good that will come out of this, which is some people will say, you know what? Don't drive an hour over here. Let's get on Zoom for the 20, 30 minutes, whatever it is for that renewal meeting or touch base. Hey, let's touch base. And you talk to them and, uh, and, but, and it's gonna, you're gonna train them and it's gonna be great. But here's, here's what was going through my head. You can't be showing up in, I'm pretending like I have my sweatshirt on, which I had a sweatshirt earlier, I'd workout clothes all day. But then I put on a nice collared shirt and I made sure I said, I'm going to dress like I would if I showed up in front of you guys. And that's what you have to do as far as uh, dress. So this doesn't and fly, Craig, Jess? She, she can't I mean, have sweatpants I mean, on during John. the show? Can't have sweatpants on? Well, yeah. they can't Well, here's see the them, thing. Then it's fine. <laughs> here's where you get credit. John, you get credit for having pants today. <laughs> that was actually, I was going to open with it today and say, everybody, wear pants, meaning wear bottoms. We make sure there are pictures on the internet. They had uh, a couple of years ago, there was a guy in... Um, I think it was United Arab Emirates and he was on uh, cable news and he had a bunch of pillows on his lap and his laptop and he was doing the interview and he's, you know, all business on the top and shorts on the bottom. And the only problem is you'll, you may think, well, I'm not going to get up. It's no problem. But when you go to reach over and grab something, everybody sees I'm wearing jeans, by the way. So everybody says, oh, nice, nice with a nice Ferragamo buckle belt there, New Yorker. I like it. I like it. Let's see <laughs> oh, it. There I you go. Know, total, total New Yorker, right? And uh, but we're going to lean all over the place. Someone's going to see something. It's no good. Um, I did something the other night and my wife knows all my material. She's heard me a thousand times <laughs> in general. And she said, um, she said, what I had, uh, I, I think I had sweatpants on. I was like, ah, I'm, I'm doing a quick call. I don't need to. And she said, aren't you going to listen to you? And I was thinking, yeah, I just I put, <laughs> I put on pants I mean, or jeans or whatever it was, because you never know this that moment. Oh, hey, let me go grab this. Let me go grab my, uh, my quarantine mask so that I can be okay. Actually, I had it backwards, everybody. I, uh, I was watching on Netflix. I got confused. I was going to bird box it, which if you've seen that movie, <laughs> this is the wrong, this is wrong for the coronavirus. Uh, I will say, and this is lightening it up. I've been working on my own um, cure for the coronavirus. Right now, it only takes care of um, some of the anxiety, but not, I haven't found out if it 100% um, cures the coronavirus but I've been testing it um, for the last two weeks. I, I, I think that's called the uh, the licorice courage bar is what Craig would call it. So those of you out there, if you need to take a shot or two before your first video, go ahead and do it. Shit. No, wait, I remember wait. doing my first podcast and I was nervous. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's funny you bring that up. And I'm, I'm just being cute because um, uh, times are tough uh, out there. But uh, don't drink before you get on camera because I'm like, I can't believe I walked right into that. 
because you will slur your words. You will not be your best. It's not good. Um, no matter how good you think, you're like, I'm great. I can hold my, it's usually a bad idea. Yes, they can't smell it over video conference. Um, but I've met clients for a drink and this and that. And they're like, hey, have another, it's a double. And I'm like, all right. And I had, I had one meeting, this is like eight years ago. And I forgot what it was, but I said, uh, oh yeah, I was thinking about recommending this guy for something, but I can't, you said, you just gave me too many drinks and now I can't think of his name. And they're like, ah, but I really, I couldn't, my brain was already turning off. So not a good idea, but a po uh, uh, I was gonna say a post-it, a piece of paper with bullet points of where you wanna go, that is a great idea because you can just peek to the side and look right back yeah, at the a camera. Lot, a lot of people are asking questions with the teleprompter in the background, guys, yeah, and that's and that's not that's not necessarily the, the Zoom thing, but what, no. what Je Jessica talked about it in a second, but what Jess just covered, guys, when I do a lot of my Facebook Lives, I got bullets, right? I got talking tracks of where I want to go with the show, and... My advice to you is when you get on these things, you know, you, you have the section in the PowerPoint where you can put the notes, but I always create agenda, create a sales narrative like you have in your meeting, right? But the only difference is you get to cheat and look down, right? So have that sales narrative to stay on track in that sales meeting. And now you can do it right here so you don't forget things. But um, why? what do you use the teleprompter for? Is it regarding this or strictly for your other stuff? It's strictly for, yeah, it's strictly for um, creating learning products. I do not recommend the teleprompter for, right, you know, average people. Um, I worked in television. I've been on the air. I interviewed you for a show that I, that I worked on, actually, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but I use that for creating learning products. And on the other side of the room, we have a curtain and a green screen. But I don't recommend that. And then, and speaking of green screen, I want to take questions, actually. Um, Zoom does have a feature where you can put a background, and unless you have really great lighting, it can look weird. I've seen some people put amazing, beautiful offices behind them, and it's looked, you know, like they're it's not <laughs> like authentic. they're hiding something. Yeah, it's not yeah, authentic. It's not you want to you want to make it feel like you're in an office. So I'm in an office. Let's have a conversation. So let me go. Let me go to that because this pertains, yes. and we'll get the story time. But let me go to how do I feel more comfortable on the sales meeting on camera, just like speaking? Because you know, the number one fear in the world is, is public speaking. In in a way, this is like public speaking. So how how do we get over that fear and that hump? Because that's the biggest thing for anybody listening to start. That's it. Yes. So here's what I say. Um, when we're thinking in this direction, we're worrying about ourselves. And I said, and when we're thinking about helping them, we're letting go of that, but we still want to feel better. And in the training business that I've been running for 15 years, that's the big word people say, I want to feel better. So I notice if I just help them with body language, voice, and carrying yourself, you're gonna feel better and then you can focus on your content. So these are the style pieces right now. So uh, here's an interactive piece. I wanna know on the chat, who wants to find out how you cannot have the camera add 10 pounds? If so, put a Y in there for yes. If you do not want the camera to add 10 pounds, put a Y in there for yes. And and, and uh, John, if, um, if nobody puts it in there, we'll just skip this one. I'll go on to something else. I'll Absolutely. talk about I'll talk about um, TV makeup, which I was planning on doing anyway. Uh, oh yeah, I remember I remember when we did the Times Square interview. I saw, I'm sitting down and they're putting makeup on my face, and I'm like, "What the hell is going on right here?" But I guess that's part yeah. of the show. So, so do, do we get any uh, response? Yeah, people are saying, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. To... You got a couple of people saying, "Yes, yes, yes." How about twenty six okay, pounds? <laughs> uh oh. It's a, a tall order, but here's what it is. What's closest to the camera is largest. What's furthest away is smallest. If I sit back on my chair like this, and here, I'm gonna even, ah. What's closest is largest. What's furthest away is smallest. So now my stomach just got bigger. My head is smaller. That's not what I'm going for. So sitting straight up, I look too stiff. So what we wanna do, and by the way, if you button, 
That's why I said my two worlds are coming together here. Um, if you button up, if you are wearing a jacket or something like that, then it brings the eyes up. But here's, I'm gonna show you sideways. I, instead of sitting back, I wanna ignore the back of the chair and I wanna actually tilt 15 degrees forward. So here I am sitting back, here I am straight up, it's like I'm a little too stiff, but here I am literally on the edge of my seat. Now look over here, by the way, now I gotta remind myself, even the, the media guy needs to <laughs> remind himself because I was looking at the, the uh, feet of myself there and I'm tilting 15 degrees forward. It definitely looks better. And then when it comes to body language, only three things, head, hands, body. So if you're taking notes, head, hands, body, that means allow your head to move around, that it's okay, your head should move around. Moving our hands, when I talk to people, everybody from every ethnic background and country moves their hands. And where do you wanna move the hands? Right in the middle of the screen, um, right in the middle of your chest so that it's in the middle of the screen. And the reason is it looks more interesting. You're more charismatic. I was using this selfie stick before, so I can only use one hand. And that's, I'm actually still using it, but it's, not, it's got a little tripod piece because I've done this before. Even though we had the computer all set up, we're like, great, we're gonna move to the backup. It's all fine. And you're gonna have moments like that too. Uh, head, hands, body. So body is just a, about allowing your body to move around. So when you see yourself looking better, and by the way, you can practice you can record yourself, whether it be on your computer or it be on your phone, and take a look. And you want to get to the point where you just say, all right, I'm going to let go of any of the vanity things that annoy me because I'm not used to looking at my own face when I'm talking to somebody else. I'm going to focus on them, and I know I look good enough with the head, hands, body. And then I'll bring up makeup. Any questions uh, that people have? Well, one thing, one thing I want to add. One thing I want to add, and I'll, yes. I'll get, I'll give you a, a pass because the program didn't work and you're using a phone. But guys, when you're when you're yeah. on camera, when you're on camera, what you want to be doing is little bit of headroom, right? Little headroom. I'm in the center. If you have a mic that's showing, you don't have to. This is a different. This is a dynamic mic. You're going to want to use a, a condenser mic, which I'll, I'll recommend one. It's the Audio Technica. I think it's the 2020. It's like 80 bucks, but you're going to want to be in the middle, like Jess said, moving hands. Uh, I saw Seth, Seth join, and I know Seth advised me he's been doing it for years. And he does it, I, I believe he does it standing. Doing it standing is a great way to relieve you of the nerves. I'm used to doing this now, but I'm a much better performer when I'm standing. So if you got a standing desk, get off your ass, stand up and do the thing. You could be more fluid. You could move around. It could be a little bit more enticing, more, especially if it's a sales meeting. A little bit more engaging and and, and, a, and a, almost like a speaking event. Yeah, I have a standing desk over there, but I'll show you this this other setup. This is a lectern that I purchased off of Amazon for fifty bucks, and it goes up higher and it goes lower, and I can even put it on something to even get it higher. So even without a standing desk, I can use that. In fact, I put it in the middle of the room. And then I go over by the standing desk and I've even put my logo on the screen behind me. And these are all ideas, people. Don't feel like, oh no, that's where the bar is. I gotta make it like a full TV show. You don't, but like Craig just said, as now I'm just making sure that, <laughs> that I can uh, balance this over here. Uh, as, I'm sorry, Craig. I, as, uh, well, Craig couldn't join us because he was having technical difficulties, but as John said, um, we're training them. You're gonna be training them to get used to video conferencing and being able to use this new medium it's going to save when we hit that point it's going to be saving you a lot of time probably right now too and we got to make the most of your time by the way i'm glad you brought up headroom what you don't want is either to have something growing out of your head so when i if i were sitting a lot of people frame themselves in the middle of the screen like this you don't want to be in the middle of the screen i understand it's dead center but for video you want to be you want to have just a little bit of room and actually um i should have a little bit more room but i like to block that light because it because i have uh, i create a little extra glow over there and that's just me getting a little bit extra on some of that yeah should and, i show makeup one, uh, uh, yeah give, one, one thing i want to add before you go to makeup you, you is talk, i'll put it, some on <laughs> is is cr cr something craig does or some other people do that drive me nuts is, is they put the camera on an angle guys 
you want the camera eye level, okay? Which means if you're talking here, you want to have, you can have the camera on a tripod stand or raise up the laptop. You want to have it eye level. You don't want the camera at an angle where it looks like you're looking down or you're looking up. It looks stupid. Um, and it's not as professional. Yeah. Absolutely. So the camera angle matters. And by the way, some of you are like, what is this, this guy? And he's putting on makeup. This is basic foundation that you can get at the drugstore. They still have drugstores open. And this is like eight bucks or something. And you uh, bring somebody with you who can just match it to your skin tone. So I don't want to look different. I just want, and by the way, I do acknowledge that some of our audience, probably many of the ladies, have a little bit more experience with makeup. And I've met many of you, and and so if you're a makeup person, not all women are makeup people, but uh, then you already know about the magic of makeup. And for some of the guys, and I think I might even said this to you, John. Um, I think I had shown you some of the makeup when we and I, when you and I worked together, uh, doing some other work. And you and I said, this is how much better it looks. You're like, oh yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll get some makeup. Yeah, makeup works because I think you went first on that Times Square interview. So, so let me uh, let me jump over to. I want to talk about the sales narrative. How is selling different Great. when we're selling in person and from the stage to now we're selling? We're talking to a prospect and we're selling over video conferences. How how does that? What changes? Well, honestly, if you feel like you are good at sales, you want to use the same techniques. You want to be looking at them. You want to engage them. I'm going to quickly run through some techniques that I teach. So when you open up, you really want to open up and establish some rapport. So you haven't talked to them for a while. You ask them about how they're doing or obviously what's going on in the world or are they okay or any of those things. Um, but you want to have a little bit of moment of connecting with people like humans. So that's something that was taught to me years ago. And I always thought, I like being a human being, by the way, having a human being moment. So we open up that way for just a little bit. Uh, for video conference and conference calls in general, you need to find out what is their schedule? Are they good for the next 15, 30, 60 minutes, whatever it is that you scheduled. Like, hey, are you still good for that? This is what I plan to do. You want to let people know. One, you want to make sure there's going to be still available because if they say, oh, yeah, I have a hard out at, you know, 30 minutes after the hour. Okay, that's good for me to know because if I get past chit-chatting with you in the very beginning and I run out of time, it's upsetting. So we want to do that. Then what we want to do is uh, we want to jump in and I know it's a different conversation if we're talking about a renewal or if we're talking to somebody who's brand new, but uh, I, I, I call it, and I'm jumping through my material a little fast, but uh, uh, flipping the table. So while you initially may feel like you're on the job interview, you want them to feel like they're on the job interview. You, you're asking them a lot of questions like, yeah, you know, I've been looking at at uh, your company and I noticed this and hey, really wanted to ask this and, and what about this? And you know, here's something I read in an article. So you're, you're asking them all these questions. You're now the leader and they're following. I once did this with a pretty big deal hedge fund CEO um, and not only did it work really well, I mean, I really was genuinely interested, but I knew what I was doing. I asked him a number of questions. He said, well, you know, it's funny that you bring that up I and mean, we've been worried about that. and you know, man, you just got right to the heart of it. And, you know, and some of the questions he had no answer to. And he said, you know, I mean, that's, that's probably what I, I was hoping to bring up with you and, you know, see if you have any thoughts, you know, oh, yeah, I have some thoughts on that. So the next step is asking questions, um, just like being a doctor, examine, diagnose, prescribe. So this is part of the examine piece, where we're, you know, looking and we're seeing what's what. I don't know why I'm a doctor who has a, a magnifying glass. I'm looking for <laughs> hanging chads or something. That's anyway, that's the election stuff. So, um, so examine, then diagnose. I mean, my take on a sales call, and this is a, just a video call, we're getting used to it, is we're, we're not going to give them every answer for the, for the uh, diagnosis. 
Um, but here's a, a phrase, here's a word that you definitely should use, which is exactly. So when they're talking and they're saying, I have this problem, you know, do you, do you think you know what to do? You could say, I know exactly what to do. I have other clients and have been in your situation and I know exactly what we do. You know, basically we kind of do this, but I would need to go through your numbers and this and that. But when they hear the word, when somebody says, I know exactly what to do, that's the person you want to work with. That's what they're thinking. It's like, you're not like, well, you know, I mean, I would still want to discover and, you know, I want to examine a few things. No, you know, I mean, providing you know what you're, what you're doing, but I've met many of you and, and I know that you know your stuff and you guys have been doing this for a while and you know how you help people. So that word exactly is really helpful. And then the next piece is uh, telling stories. You know, John gave a couple of stories uh, just before and, and, you know, it could be short. You know, he had a very short story about being owning a landscaping business. And, you know, you're going to be in one of the guys in the tree. You don't want to be on the truck all day long. You want to be mowing those lawns. So it made us smile. I'm imagining all of you smiling. I smiled. Um, being somebody who not only was a teenager who mowed his, his lawn, um, but one of my first entrepreneurial efforts was, hey, if I get a lawnmower and I just mow some of the neighbor's lawns, just having three lawns, I would have more money than my friends working all week at a minimum wage job. And, um, and it was fantastic. And I did it on one day a week. Um, but I was also 18 and I only do, took three, <laughs> three cli clients on because I was lazy and wanted to be with my girlfriend who I married, by the way, that's another story. Anyway, um, so we want to tell stories. Notice I'm, I'm including some yeah, I, I just want to, I, I want to jump in. I remember when you, yes. when you, when you, uh, I called you one night and those that use Jess, you get Jess. If you use his service, he comes out, he coaches you, he teaches you a video, and then you get him for a year. You get to harass him for a year. I said, Jess, I got a panel. That's good. How do I, what in the hell, what the hell do I do? And he said, listen, you get up there, you say a point, you make a point, and then you tell a story to make the point, and then you shut up, right? And I think that's exactly what you want to do with some of these talkings. And I mean, just in your sales meeting, but this makes it easier because you get a cheat sheet to look down at is, is, even now I'm taking notes as Jess talks uh, as, okay, great. There's something else I got to bring up later. Let me make sure I mention this is, is you can write up little stories that, Hey, here's a point, And then here's a story that I can tell. This is what I do for every show is I make points and then I tell actual stories because I'm in the business with you guys. I give actual real life stories to the point, And I learned that from Jess. That's awesome. Uh, it's so great. And here's why we want to do it, everybody. Stories are more memorable. This is the way we interact as human beings. If you go to dinner with somebody, think way back when we, we were going out to dinner with people. But you can do it through Zoom now, actually. We, we've been doing some of that through Zoom. How does the whole dinner go? What happens is you say, oh, you know what happened to me once? Oh, you're not going to believe. And you tell a story. And then they tell a story. And then you tell a story. That's how we interact. Stories are the currency of life. It's how we, it, it also, it's how we remember. So we, we create visuals in their brain. So, and, and every story must have a message. So if you have a story and a point, as John just said, they walk away having this deep memory of the exact story. And I did this little experiment on the folks when we were um, at your live event. And I told a story and I had a point and then I waited 15 minutes and I quizzed everyone. And they had this ridiculous recognition of all of the pieces of the story and the point of the story. And that's what we want for you. We want, say you're telling a story of a CFO that you helped, they had this problem and you, and you use things, storytelling techniques, you have dialogue. CFO says this to me. And I said, well, uh, let me ask you a question. And then they said this, and then I said this, and then this, and you can even, you know, give them a first name. You can, we don't want to, um, we can change the name if we were worried about people knowing who they are. Uh, tell some of the, what the scenery is like, what it looked like or felt like, or it was the hottest day of the summer. And they come in and we're both sweating if that's somehow really making the story better. Um, but we want to tell stories because they're memorable. And if those people go back to their company 
and they remember you and what you said and what the point was, now you're much closer to the sale and them taking action. And we wanna be doing this all throughout our life. It becomes a muscle, muscle memory. You're gonna be using it all the time. So, so that would be the next step there. And, and I have a last piece in the sales conversation. Then I, I want to, and if anybody has questions or you have, <laughs> I don't want to keep talking too much. You got questions, but here's the last piece, which is the call to action. Now, really, you should be planting little seeds all along and little micro calls to action. You know, even where you're saying, like, have you ever had that? Yes. So they call this creating yeses in the mind of, of your uh, audience. So, uh, you know, hey, I mean, look, I said to the guy, ask yourself this question, wouldn't you want to do this? All right, I mean, you've thought that, yeah, okay, yeah. So you're getting them to say yes and buy in um, and any little micro calls to action. And then the final call to action might be, if you're talking to, well, we, we work together, John, uh, we were talking about you talking to a room of folks, which you can do, you can invite them to uh, a Zoom call where you have, um, by the way, I would pay, I think that supposedly the free version they got they got rid of that you only have 45 minutes, but uh, I would pay for the $15 version so that you don't look low rent, by the way. That it doesn't say, oh, you ran out of time and then hang up on people. Um, I've had the, the paid version for, for a number of years. So, and it's 15, it's 15 bucks and then um, you just, you don't have to worry about it and it's super easy. But we wanna have a call to action. So the call to action might be, hey, let's take out our phones and let's just set an appointment. Let's set an appointment and we'll have the conversation together. And if it's on Zoom, I'll send you the link, but let's at least both look. Okay, oh, you know what? Tuesday at two, I'm available. Okay, I'll send you a calendar invite. Nice. So we want to get them to say yes to the next step. I'm gonna give you a phrase that a buddy of mine uh, teaches and he teaches sales. So I do sales presentation training and he does full on sales training. Um, and a few times we've collaborated, but his phrase is BAM FAM, B-A-M-F-A-M. You know what it means? I'll tell you what it means. It means book a meeting from a meeting, BAM FAM. So when you're, when you're winding up and they're like, well, we'll have to circle back to this. You BAM FAM them. You book a meeting from a meeting. And they're like, well, I'm not really sure. I'll, t I'll tell you what, um, would you be, and this is another phrase from, I can't remember who, but uh, would you be opposed to just putting a day on the calendar? This way we don't have to worry about it. And, you know, we have an opportunity to talk. Would you be opposed to? I, I mean, sure. You and like, you, no, and you, have, they, you have them on their computer with their calendar right there. It's They can't say, I don't have my calendar on me. Hey, let's just pop open your calendar real quick. Let's just put it on there and get it ahead of us. Um, yeah. Let me, let, open with That's fire, it. close with fire. Are we treating this sales presentation like a, 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 a speaking event? I, I do. Should we not? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think it's all important. So when I see people show up on some of these video calls and uh, they, they're wearing their pajamas uh, in the middle of the day, it's like, oh, you hope your robe doesn't open up in the middle of this sales meeting. Um, that, that hasn't, they hasn't always worn a robe. But we definitely, we got to treat it like it's real. I dressed in a way where I say, I'm treating this like it's real. I have my light going. I sat in the part of the room that shows something about who I am and, and you know, clippings and things that you can look and you know what city I'm in and all that stuff. Yes, so we have to. So when we're talking to them, even if it's a renewal, you want to look top notch. You don't want them to say, should I be taking advice from somebody who has a dirty laundry sitting on the bed behind them? And by the way, I saw one person already do a video conference and they had a, a bed behind them was in their bedroom and dirty laundry piled up. Uh, I guess it was clean laundry that wasn't folded. I don't know, it wasn't the look I think that any of you are going for. So the opposite would be, we wanna be as professional as if we showed up. You know, we wanna look nice. I'm like, you know, I'll put some of this in here. You know, I gotta look like John, make sure there we go, right? There you go, New York, New York special. And you know, uh, before we, as we wrap up here, I wanted to, throw in something that you did that I think is super valuable too is guys, especially with the smaller ones that I think you should be doing with Zoom calls or just phone calls with for renewals is they're busy people. A lot of them are typically running the business. Yeah, I used to have, uh, 
I may still have them. I don't know because I don't do them anymore. But I, I had uh, you know uh, a car shop, ten employees, and you know the owners under the under the car half the day probably. So the reality is is they don't have time. They're working during the day during business hours. They don't have time to talk to you. So which Jess utilized was. I, I practiced my speaking and I recorded it and I sent it to Jess and he sends me his email. It was the coolest thing ever. It was my full speaking event and there, where Jess was in the bottom screen in a circle. And Jess, you could say the program later is, is he was yeah. commentating. People like it. He was commentating my whole, um, my whole practice session, pausing it, uh, commenting on that, restarting it, and, and and doing it so people can go. Well, shit, I don't got time to deal with a health insurance renewal, but I can watch the video for my renewal later, just like in an employee meeting. You can do that. What was that program you used, Jess? Do you remember? All right, everybody, hold on to your hats. It's free, and it's awesome. There are obviously different ones, but this one I use is the one I use with you. I just love it so much. So it's called Vidyard. V I D Y A R D. One word. Vidyard. And do Google search, and it's a free plugin for the Chrome browser. So you got to be on Chrome, and then you type in uh, or you just install. It's not hard. And then there's a little button there. So anytime you want to record your screen, you have a choice. You can either be in a little circle in the corner or not. You can turn that off. So actually, I experiment. It depends if I want to turn it on or off. And uh, I guess for yours, I had it on. And then you can you can show a document, a proposal. Uh, on my computer, I can kind of pinch and I can make things um, bigger, which is just a feature of the computer. And people really appreciate those. And the only thing I would throw in, oh, and it's super easy. Um, and then it just finishes and it gives you a link and it looks beautiful. Uh, and then you just take the link and throw it in your email. Um, there are paid ones, you wanna get real fancy about it. There's a paid one called BombBomb, B-O-M-B, B-O-M-B, BombBomb. And, uh, and there's a third one I'll, I'll tell you, which is also paid, which is one mob, O-N-E-M-O-B. So the thing is, if you say, oh, I want all these extra features where I can put mailing lists and other stuff, well then go, go look that up. Um, but I discovered this one and it's exactly what I needed and it's fast. I don't have to download a video and wait and put it up somewhere. Um, but it comes back to this, it's just communicating better with people and also really looking closely at the time because as you just pointed out, we got to value people's time. That guy who owns the automotive uh, you know, shop that they're fixing people's vehicles, if this guy is underneath cars half the day, you might be thinking, I better not go over 10 minutes. I'm gonna, and then if it turns out it's a seven minute video, that's a selling point. I'm gonna email and say, hey, I got it down into seven minutes. I'm gonna tell you just the biggest pieces. Tell me what you think. And they'll be pretty grateful. Short, short and sweet is the key on those videos, especially when it's a recording. Uh, if you guys have any questions for Jess, go ahead and put it below because we are going to close out. Jess, any final thoughts here for the audience to remember before we jump here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny. You brought up a piece of my stuff that I, I shouldn't remember, but I'm thrilled that you do because you've heard it a bunch of times and you're living it, which is open with fire. Open with fire. So I have two pieces, of that and I and I like to also close with fire. So I am going to close with some fire. And that means, well, it's actually taken from a phrase from David Ogilvy, the big advertising guru, who said, if you're selling fire extinguishers, open with fire. So I ask people all the time that I train. I say, what fire do you open with? Are you opening with? Well, let me give you a big outline of what we're going to talk about today. When the person's thinking, just just do it. Just get right in. Or are you going to open with something that knocks their socks off? So pick something, open with fire. I had a few things. I mean, I was thinking, it depended how, how cute. I mean, if I was going to cover my mouth or if I was going to, going to jump in and talk about the camera adds 10 pounds. Don't, you know, have not to have the camera add 10 pounds. I was thinking, oh, that could be a good open with fire. And I'm going to give you, I know we might still talk um, if people have questions, but I'm going to, uh, well, I'll save it. My closing with fire. I'm going to close with something that I think people need to hear. So no, no, go ahead. That'll go be ahead. moments away. Go ahead and go with it because we're we are, okay. we're, we're, we're over time already. And I want to, I want to respect right. their time, but go ahead. Close it out, Jesse boy. Perfect. Well, all right. So here it is. If you want to close more sales, you'll make more offers. 
If you want to close more sales, you make more offers. So as you're sitting there and you're saying, I don't know if people want to talk to me, I want you to think of your day in terms of offers. Have you made an offer, meaning, hey, uh, you can, it can be an offer to be on the on Zoom together, or it can be an offer for the actual program that you want them to purchase. But we need to make those offers. Sometimes we get off and we say, oh, I never asked for the sale. So I just make it super simple. I say, we throw offers out there. I offered somebody something yesterday. I thought for sure she wouldn't be a client. And I said, well, you know what? Here, I bundled together some of my online courses and some uh, some other stuff and a little bit of uh, time with me. You know, this is what the price would be. And she wrote back and she said, you know what? Done. So awesome. I made an offer and I got to make a close. And you guys should go do it too. Jess, uh, we appreciate you so much coming on and sharing all these thoughts. Why don't you give me an offer and, and so they can see it? Because tell them where they can find you. Tell them if, if they how they can use you. I mean, I know you're doing speaking training, but maybe you're doing sales training now through video. Maybe somebody's got something they want to review with you. I'll tell you what. If anybody wants to just have a 15-minute uh, chat with me and just uh, pick my brand on something, you're part of this group. Um, go to appointmentwithjess.com. It's my super secret link that links over to my calendar. And uh, I'm happy to chat with any of your people, uh, offer advice, um, and be helpful. How about that? It, I offered something free, John Sprocko. People, People like free. That's what the show is here. It's free. Jess, as always, always a pleasure to have you on. Can't thank you enough. Jess Todd Feld, guys, go out and check him out. Uh, if you want speaking help, been a pro, done a great job for me. Uh, my my speaking event was like a friggin' show. I remember it was it was amazing. Um, thanks for joining it was us, guys. Fantastic. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. I must say, it was like uh, it was like a movie. That's what I felt it to be because that's how we prepared it. But guys, thanks for joining us. As always, heads up, advisor. We'll see you on the next one, same place, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, guys. Remember, keep listening, keep learning. We will see you on the next one.